Howdy, Connection Group leaders. I hope you're well today. We are home from kids camp. Um, we're not even home and, 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 and barely one piece. Man, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal, um, I guess I can say week. It's weekend. Um, I, I haven't heard the official final number, but I'm not going to be surprised if the final number is just over 50 salvations, over 50 little ones who chose to make Jesus their their king last week, never mind other kids that came forward for prayer and wanted to rededicate their lives, or some saying, hey, I'm ready to be baptized. There were other kids, like one young man that just came to me that just shared, and he was just really struggling because his father had died. Um, lots and lots of, of kids just opening up and, and, and giving us the opportunity to minister to them. And that was just Lake Church, not to mention um, all the other churches that were here. Now, that, that 50 number doesn't just include Lake Church. Uh, number, but nonetheless, great stuff happened at kids camp. So thank you for praying for us while we were away over the weekend, and we're terribly excited to be home and see what God's going to do next, both in our children's ministry and youth ministry, and beyond. Um, I, I am, gosh, I love this passage that we're looking at from Numbers fourteen. Y'all have heard me uh, preach about it before. I think at the senior center last year when I got to share it. But I've always loved this passage. Because it's encouraging and it's fascinating, but it's also really, really sobering. And that's really kind of where my head's at today. I'm, I'm up here in, in the part of the loft where we teach our, our 10th grade boys. And I love that class. They're a stellar group of young men. And uh, I've got some fantastic teachers with them. And they're, they're growing really, really well. Uh, this is just experiential speak. This is not statistical. This is anecdotal TJ sharing. But I've got almost 25 years under my belt of experience saying this. It's usually between ninth and 10th grade year uh, for a kid's life when, when their belief either sticks or you begin to see it just totally fall apart. Maybe not fall apart is the best way to put it. You can generally tell by their 10th grade year whether or not they're actually going to go on to truly follow Jesus on their own. I praise God we see that, gosh, a high, high percentage of the time. Uh, our kids are, are, are learning to follow Jesus. It's certainly true of this group of boys in this class, which I'm so thankful for. I bring that up just to simply say that that's what I'm thinking about when I read this passage today. We use the phrase the children of Israel, and they were not all children, obviously, although there were plenty of children involved. But they were a group of people who were, for all practical purposes, a lot of them really young in their faith. And God has shown them some miraculous things. He's given some divine uh, leadership and some very explicit and specific instructions. And then we watched them for 40 years just struggle. And really, one of the biggest struggles was right here. When they get to the edge of the promised land, and they all freak out and they go, no, we're not sure yet. In fact, we're quite sure we don't want any part of it. And what's really fascinating and even frustrating is the fact that their, their objections to wanting to do the next step that God had called them to, he had already told them this was coming. So if you go back to Exodus chapter 3, the Lord says, and I think it's like verses 8 and 9, says it to Moses. This would have been passed down to all of them, though. Hey, when you get to the promised land, you're going to find that it's a land flowing with milk and honey. And it's filled with the Amalekites and the Jebusites and the, all of the Ite people. But I'm going to give them to you, and I'm going to give that land to you. But everybody knew that particular group of people, all those groups of people already listed, like they were not friendly people. This was not a surprise when the spies went in and found themselves surrounded by giants in the land. And yet they came back and they give this port, man, sure enough, like land flowing with milk and honey. And man, there's all these bad guys and they all want to kill us and, and we look like grasper. That wasn't a surprise. I bring that up because this is very similar to the situation we find ourselves in. We live in this world where we look around and we go, holy cow, like everything is on fire. Everything is a problem. And we do genuinely want to protect our kids. And so we make decisions based on what we're seeing around us. But the Lord has called us to something so much greater, not just faith in him and his promises, but he's actually said specifically to him, hey, this is, this is uh, John 14. Jesus says, in this world, you are going to have many troubles. You're going to face opposition. You're going to face lots of people who don't believe. You're going to face, your kids are going to face constantly people who are explaining to them things that are 100% not true. They're going to be surrounded by that. But I need you to trust me and believe me. I need you to declare your, no, no, no. I need you to declare my truth to yourselves and to your kids. And I need you to obey it. Even if it looks like it's going to be really, really hard. 
The sobering part about this passage to me is this simple fact. They already had all of the information. In fact, they were seeing with their own eyes this incredible thing and already experienced God in unique ways. And still, despite all of that, thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people chose to rebel. And here we are 4,000 years later, and we're no different. We see God move all the time, and yet people still choose to rebel, including our kids. And so my hope and my prayer this week is that this will be a message where we um, encourage one another to, to buck up a little bit, right? I mean, like, hey, we need to be faithful. We need to believe Jesus when he tells us to act. We need to believe Jesus when he tells us to be faithful. We need to believe Jesus even when it looks like all of the opposition is against us, because it is. And we need to believe that he is going to win the day. Just like he was going to win the day for the children of Israel back in this stage, he's going to win the day for us too. And so we need to trust and obey, as that good old song says. So, hope this is helpful. Hope it's encouraging. Far more than I were, though, man, I hope that your um, time just studying this passage is encouraging, because it does encourage me too. Let's, let's approach it soberly and prayerfully and humbly and beg God together and continue to help one another to live this thing out. Uh, not only for the sake of our children, but also for our sake too. Love you guys. See y'all later.